Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and we're back for some more singular survival. Our plan for today is to go ahead and actually retrofit the flying sausage. Now, this will add a fair amount of weight to it, but it's something we've planned to do for a while. Yes, we're going to Mars. Yes, it will need to still work in atmosphere. So it means we're going to be going ahead and, well, planning to add these sons of guns in here. It only takes 12 of these. Now, I'm not exactly positive on the amount of thrust we'll need for it, but that's the whole reason we have this open area here is because we've been planning to do this all along. Believe it or not, it is actually in the plans from well, all the way back when we built this thing, even if it means we have to go ahead and stick something on top of the whole lot. I've also gone ahead and brought Sage Cam in. Oh, wait. Oh, oh no. It completely missed. It's lost. I lost it. I, I have no, oh wait, no, is that it there? Is that it right there? That's it right there. Oh God, Jesus Christ almighty. And so we can have SageCam watch us work, and if we decide to do anything silly, well, it'll, of course, capture that. Now, as for thrust here, I'm actually not sure how much we need. I know we're going to need a fair amount, but not sure how much exactly. So we're going to build this up in a, we're basically going to, have to do some really quick tests to see if this is going to be enough thrust to hold it. Now, once we get back into a planet's orbit, we're going to have to do some more testing again, of course. Did I just get bumped by something? What's going on? Oh, the whole ship is moving in. People have said I should fix these struts. We might do that. I'm actually thinking of upgrading the struts. And um, once we get the flying sausage upgraded, putting a big drilling machine on the bottom of the ship, or at least making a drilling platform to go ahead and mine up all that uranium and everything. Oh, people have also mentioned that uh, often resources are sort of spawned together. Common resources are spawned together. So we got uranium and whatnot over there. And with the magnesium and silicon, I believe, those usually apparently spawn right next to one another. Uh, let's go ahead and keep on working on this. Okay, everything just keeps moving little by little. Uh, change of plans, we're getting off the planet before everything just goes to pot. We are definitely not sitting down here. We're gonna go ahead, get ourselves in orbit. Fucking crap. Um, finish off fixing the, well, changing the flying sausage. Hope it's able to fly. We'll do a quick save because obviously we would test it down here on the planet, but who knows what's going to happen. Um, let's go ahead and get our thrusters all online. Get ourselves off the planet. Lickety split. No time at all to waste here. We'll get ourselves into orbit. That's enough speed. Let the planet slow us down. I keep saying planet, the moon, slow us down. We've got a few little thrusters. Should be trying to slow us up too, yeah. You're kind of bad thrusters. But I think we'll probably reach, well, we'll break orbit, won't we? And then we'll just point this thing at the sun, get our ship going, and then fly that back down there. Maybe we'll bring the whole thing down, but for the time being, eh, I don't think we want to do that. We can just leave it safe and sound up here and just use the flying sausage as a taxi. We'll go ahead and build a huge mining platform down there to mine out the entire universe. And then once we're done, we might go ahead and try to rig it up to some sort of bottom scaffolding on the flying virus. Uh, let's give it a little bit more boost since we haven't quite breached the planet's gravity yet. The planetoid's gravity, I guess is the best way of saying that. 0 0.09. I've also just looked over at SageCam's footage and found some very odd, well, oddities happening. The ground seems to still have our little smoky smoke. So let's turn off our thrusters. Nope, still has the smoky smokes. Very odd. Very, very odd. There we go. We've broken the planet's gravity. Uh, so we'll go ahead and turn on our little dinky maneuvering thrusters again. Those very, very slowly slow us down and get us from uh, moving any farther. Uh, I don't believe I have asteroids turned on or anything, so our ship should just be safe and sound sitting up here. And we can go ahead and keep working on everything. Do I have larger stopping thrusters somewhere? I don't believe I do. Uh, let's just turn on our maneuvering thrusters and everything and do a little tiny bit of rotation here. We'll actually go ahead and hop in the other seat so we can point this directly at the sun here. There we go. Uh, and we'll even use our aiming camera. There we are. Um, and yeah, it looks like the sun will be to our left. And as we do this, of course, the larger thrusters will be pointing in the direction we're moving. Slow us down, lickety split. And we'll head up here so we can grab tons and tons of electricity from the sun. There it is. There we go. So that should now be gobbling up tons of stuff. There we go. Very easy. And you can see our speed at the bottom right has decreased pretty quickly. And so we go back to third person, so we press F to get out of that. You should see, yeah, any movement we have, we s somehow our movement has been transferred to another direction. 
I don't understand that at all. It doesn't make any physical sense that you would turn your ship in the other direction so that you'd be moving in the other direction unless you put force to actually move you in that other direction. There's some funkiness going on. Either way, though, we've stopped moving now. We can go ahead and head back out and keep working on the flying sausage. Uh, and turn our inertial dampers back on. And the outer door somehow isn't closed there, so that's just fantastic. You know what we should probably do here? Is close these doors. That way, whenever we inevitably vent this whole room again on accident, we're not going to be losing this whole place. Also, I'm going to say it again, I dislike that they changed the way these worked. I quite liked it when they never had any air in them if, well, they weren't open to the inside. Now you're always venting air, it seems. Oh wait, no, are they no longer doing it? That's a positive. It didn't seem like it vented that time. Very good. Very, very good. I'm also going to go ahead and close this door before we forget about it. There we are. Safe and sound. Whew. Okay. Well, let's get to work on this stuff, um, and hopefully it won't take too long. There we go, got all that done. Took a little while, but hey, what's done is done. Success! Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and hop in here, and people are saying, atmospheric, that the atmospheric thrusters here are currently using power just because they're on, turned on at all. Um, I can't believe that, really. It doesn't make any sense. They do have a little bit of thruster, but just in case it's true, I'm going to go ahead and just do that and shut them all off. Hopefully that'll take care of them. Also, the hydrogen bottle kerfuffles we've been dealing with for a couple episodes. Uh, oxygen generator. There we go, number nine. I need to be in control panel for this, don't I? Tank nine. There we go. Oxygen generator. So somebody's been telling me, well, a million people have told me a million different screw-ups, but it's oxygen B, and it should fix it and fill it, the rest of it in. Okay, yeah, look, the name just updated the top right. So now it's going to try to move that in there. Um, and let's actually click, well, I was going to say off of it, but, uh, oxygen generator, there we go. We can click through a few of these, we'll get rid of the tank 9 thing. Uh, and let's do a priority, what do you want to do, 1? Let's go with priority 1, copy it, and we'll put it on a few of these. There we go. So we'll be sorting out our oxygen tanks through four different of these. Cool. Hopefully that'll get it all taken care of. In fact, I think this was full of oxygen tanks. Yep, and it's not anymore. So if we search oxygen tank, okay, it's called a bottle. There we go. Uh, there's still a few in the cockpit because it's a bit silly about that, but yes, indeed, looks like it sorted them all out pretty evenly. Coolio. Uh, let's go ahead and see. We got all these in here. We still got to do the other side. All of our atmospheric thrusters are off now. Um, and are we left our hydrogen thrusters on? Jesus Christ. Okay, wow, that's not ideal, is it? Uh, in fact, we don't even need to go through here. We can just go K on this, and then thruster, uh, lift your hydrogen thrusters, maneuvering hydrogen thrusters, small hydrogen thrusters, and there should be... So, well, I guess that was it. Yeah, that should have been it. So there we go. It should have taken care of that. Blimey, I can't believe I missed that for so very long. Hmm, well, it's all taken care of now. Let's uh, get to work on installing some more ion thrusters on this side. And while this is being built up, I just thought I'd mention something I just discovered. Every single one of these blocks, when I mouse over them, on the right, it now tells you who they were built by. This must be part of the new block limitation thing. I've gone ahead and disabled that, because as I said in one of my previous episodes, I think two or three episodes ago, I actually hate the idea of block limits in games. It's very infuriating. If you're going to give me an open world, I expect to be able to cover the whole thing in steel or concrete, if I please. Uh, so I wasn't too happy when they announced that they were adding block limits in. Luckily, it is an option, so if I want to deal with the consequences, I uh, can. The consequences being lag and an unoptimized world that will probably never be optimized because I guess it is unreasonable to ask for the world to be endless without issue, eh? It is interesting, though, that now even your standard blocks now apparently have some sort of form of ownership in a way because, of course, it now tells you who built them. I don't think it would actually affect ownership if you went to hack a ship, because, of course, you need computers for proper ship ownership. But, um, interesting nonetheless. Alrighty, there we go. That's that done. I've also noticed a few little things, and I'm not talking about a little piece of metal I'm, well, failing to replace right there. I'm talking about uranium falling. So if we go to you and do uranium, or reactor, actually, 
uh, our uranium is actually dropping, which makes no sense because we should be faced relatively towards the sun. Yes, indeed, everything is cooking pretty well. The sun's moving a bit, but we're still pretty much there. So I'm wondering what the hell is going on with our reactors. Why are they outputting so much? Current output is very little, actually, looking at them here. But I'm wondering why it's anything. Solar. Uh, solar panel. It's outputting everything it can. So what's gobbling all of our energy up here? Uh, battery. Are our batteries still doing their whole... Yeah, they're still doing their take some, put some out. Very interesting. I really am uneasy about this system. Because current input is a little bit, and then current output is... Why are they outputting... When the solar panels should be... I guess they're not putting out enough. I guess we need more solar panels. We could set the batteries to their uh, automatic state, basically, or their um, semi-auto. But what this does, it basically sets them to recharge. Once they're fully recharged, so does the discharge, and once they're fully discharged, back to recharge. That's what semi-auto does, instead of the whole idea of, well, the batteries only kick in when there's more power needed, which I guess must be what's happening right now, as uh, the solar panels must not be cutting to butter. Cutting to butter, is that the right saying? I've lost the saying. Anyway, with the majority of our side thrusters in place, I'm not going to go ahead and stick some more front thrusters on. I say some more, we didn't have any. But I'm going to grab some, and I think I'm going to put them right here, so the flames should, in theory, be passing over. Yep, that'll pass over everything. So we'll put, I think, uh, four of these in each direction. That should uh, allow us to uh, fly about relatively easily. A little ugly, but uh, we can always go ahead and tweak them a little bit in the future. And we'll put these in right here, right, like so, and that should do the trick there. Well, you know, but good thing about this is they're actually touching the uh, other original planetary thrusters as well, right at that connection point right there, keeping everything uh, in place. There we go, got all those in place, so that should allow us some maneuverability as well as the ability to angle downwards. Now the big question is here, are six of those thrusters going to be enough to fight the 0.25 gravity of this planetoid? This moon of ours. Honestly, I don't know, but let's go ahead and find out. I just did a quick save. We're going to go ahead and throw caution to the wind. And say, probably not. Probably not. Let's go ahead and actually see here. This uh, landing gear is actually, landing gear, this connector is actually pulling us back down. Uh, does it say the exact force strength? So that one's barely anything. What about the strength of you? What's your strength set at? Barely anything as well. I'm going to guess that if it can't even escape from that, it might find itself in a spot of bother while trying to escape from our little moon. So we're going to go ahead and, I think, put two, maybe three more thrusters in. Let's see. Can we finagle, shenagle, shtickshies up here? Uh, maybe like that. Yes, that looks like it should fit. Uh, of course, right, I forgot for a moment there that... Uh, collision volumes, not collision volumes, the actual block volumes, if they meet one another, they uh, will not place, even if the models themselves would not be touching. That would be an interesting thing if you could place uh, blocks inside of other blocks, wouldn't it? It would allow for some really interesting constructions. Also, I don't have steel plates. There we go, that's those three done. And I know some people might be concerned about the fire hitting these, but if their collision volumes have any sort of sense of them, uh, these thrusters in the past have only ever gone shooting out of that center point, meaning anything to directly to the left or right of them should be relatively fine. So, as long as these don't have the ridiculously stupid collision volume, uh, these thrusters shouldn't cause any damage at all. So let's really quickly just go ahead and test them, popping into a cockpit. Let's even go ahead and just use this in spacebar. Yeah. Looks like no damage is being taken, so... Looks like we're all good there. Time to go ahead and put some more on the other side. We're going to do a real quick check to make sure they weren't actually damaged. Yeah, look, perfect health. Good, 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 good. Good. So let's go ahead and stick some more onto the other side. Also, I just looked at Sage Cam. Everything's moving. Because I just pulled the whole station with that. So we need to go really quickly. I think K on this will work. Uh, thrusters, not lifters, maneuvering hydrogen thrusters, turn those on, it'll stabilize the station, we're just going to leave those running for a little bit while uh, we're moving stuff about. That could have been very bad. Also, the sun is now at a different point, it's done its whole rotation, I think, and sure enough, solar panels are still gathering a little bit of energy off of that, so up here we should be pretty much permanently good. I'm starting to think maybe we should angle the ship a bit more that way, but 
Well, something seems to be doing its loop-de-loop -loop over there at the current time, I think we'll just leave it as is. Oh, by the way, on the subject of block limits, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. I realized I had a little bit more to say about that. Uh, and that is really simply that I can understand why they're adding them, especially for servers. Because servers, well, it has the possibility of everything being covered in a million trillion blocks by a million trillion different people. So it makes sense that there would be some sort of a limitation there to prevent people from just building heinous massive grids or those self-repeating machines that'll just keep tossing stuff together uh, forever and ever. Still, I would really like them to somehow find a way that way they don't have to deal with any sort of limitation, particularly for a um, single player or at least limited multiplayer with one or two people where you don't have massive moving grids. Because, of course, there's things like, uh, what's that game called? Dual Universe, was it? Ah, uh, yes, Dual Universe, where it's promising to be huge, massive, pretty much endless, let's build the biggest world ever. I'm not the biggest fan of... Oh, oh my god, the interiors look sexy. I'm a little mixed on a lot of it. I'm not sure exactly how everything in the world's going to work. It seems like it's all smushy, smushy voxels, which is actually kind of cool. But at the same time, I'm really... I, I don't know. I'd be all over it if it wasn't for the fact that it has a monthly subscription fee. I don't like monthly subscription fees. And honestly, I would much prefer the idea that I can spend 100 hours on my own and build something massive, where that game seems like it's trying to focus on the idea of, well, even if you put 100 hours into this, you're not going to get anything done unless you have a large group with you. So, mixed feelings on that. But anyway, that game is promising to build a huge, massive universe and not have any massive sim speed issues. So, block limits suddenly coming into play in Space Engineers is a little disappointed. Anyway, we went ahead, waffled on a bit, got our thrusters in place. Let's hop into our cockpit. Let's go ahead and press spacebar and see if can we break free of this connector. Not quite, but I think we have enough now to be able to survive down on the planetoid. So we're going to go ahead and enable connector, disable connector, actually enable connector. I just realized we turned on the wrong maneuvering thrusters. We turned on the big ones. We wanted the small ones. Thruster. Uh, maneuvering thrusters, large ones. There we go. Small hydrogen thrusters are the ones we wanted. Not these large maneuvering ones. Off, off. There we go. We'll leave the small ones on, as I said. Leo, hop back in here. The ship should be, yep, zero meters per second. We'll disconnect you. We'll fly up. Awesome. Let's do a quick save, just in case the entire universe decides it no longer wants to be friends with us. And uh, let's attempt a landing down on the planet here. Well, moon here. The moon, apparently, because it's an Earth-like planet. And this will allow us to start building on our facility down there. We're going to have a big, huge mine array that, in theory, once we're done, we're going to actually go ahead and pick up and bring it back to this ship and connect into it. Probably going to be picking up with the flying virus, actually. So the flying virus is going to get some massive teeth on the bottom. Alrighty, as for our descent, everything is looking pretty well. Oh, except for I just saw a red alert there. What was that about? 19 minutes of fuel time firing a lot of these. 22 minutes when I started firing even more of them. That was odd. And now it doesn't seem to be changing really much at all. Either way, uh, we're still not even in the planet's gravity yet, which is a bit up. Oh, there we go. Odd, I was going to say. Uh, you can see the flying virus far up above us. We'll turn off our inertial dampers for the time being and just simply fall. And once we get near the sterolith, we'll kick back in the thrusters and check our descent rate. Uh, in fact, maybe we should check it now, don't you think? See if we can even slow ourselves down. Oh, we had a power overload. That must have been what we were seeing earlier. Which is very odd, because it doesn't make any sense. Because I was holding three directions, which is going to use up as much power as we possibly can. It wasn't making any difference. Hmm. Anyway, we're done the 15 minutes of fuel. That's no good. But as long as we can actually slow ourselves down, we'll be able to land this ship and then fly up by hand and get ourselves some more uranium cooked up. And look at that. We were able to stop our speed. It took our little while to slow up, but hey, it was successful, which means I think we're actually going to be fine with this ship. Um, I'll get us down pretty low. Stop giving me a warning. We're fine. We have 15 minutes according to the computer there. 14 minutes. As long as we can touch down, we can take back off on foot and get some power.
just just stop. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, 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 stop. I said if it failed, it's gonna reload. Alrighty, landing attempt two. Rotate you around, get all six of those thrusters right there. Oh, I, I think this is actually worse than the first time. My god, I am quite horrible at this. Shite. Oh yeah, that was worse than the first time. Also a very silent death. Alrighty, so this time, slight change of plans. We're going to go ahead and head towards it, but we're going to try to keep our speed limited to about... 10 meters per second once we get closer. So for the time being, yes, I am going to boost ourselves up the speed once we hit the gravity. Gonna level ourselves out and then try to control our speeds. Hopefully this will now result in a successful touchdown. If this more cautious touchdown fails, it's definitely back to the drawing board and by that I mean I need to put more thrusters on this damn thing. Alrighty, so we've just entered into the gravity, and the ship is attempting to slow itself down using the front thrusters. We're rotating ourselves about, to bring ourselves up, and that is going to fire the large thrusters on the bottom and slow us down. And our plan here is whenever our speed gets around 10, well, 5 to 10 meters per second, we're just going to tap C and try to keep it at that speed. So we'll continue to go towards the ground, but, oh, there we go, we're around that speed right now, but not at the heinous speeds where we couldn't decelerate from quickly enough before. And it's 10 meters per second, so, and it's, see, let's see, gravity's increasing, but it's still, I don't know, what is that, five seconds before we stop completely from 10? One, two, three, four, so about four, that's 40 meters at 10 meters per second. Of course, that's dropping as well. But um, I think at 100 meters height, we're going to go ahead and pretty much just go full manual on when it comes to, well, speed and everything. Basically, I'm going the third person around then to watch ourselves, but right now we're just going to watch the numbers. I keep getting a ship fuel is low. We're going to fix that right now. I'm going to go to the batteries on this son of a gun, and we're just going to set these to discharge. And suddenly we have no more issues. Like I said, the batteries are supposed to be, as according to some people have told me, an overflow thing, as in they're the, well, they're going to drain power until power is needed, and then they're going to give it back. But apparently they don't currently work like that. Also, I wasn't watching our speed. We got up to 15, and we seem to be dropping a bit quicker than I would like. I think we might be... Oh, I'm scared. So our gravity is doubled, which means I suspect it would take us twice as long, so it was four seconds before. Yep, about eight seconds to go ahead and bring us to a stop. So it looks like we're probably going to have to give ourselves 20, well, 100 meters was still enough. Because we were going pretty, eh, eh. Okay, my brain's getting a bit panicky. Numbers, I'm not the best at it, best of times. Anyway, looks like we're going to be all right here. I really wish the altimeter and the speed were closer together. I've gotten us up to 20 meters per second because I wasn't paying attention. Oh, it's decelerating real slow. Oh, it's going real slow. Come on. Come on, get us back. Slow us down quicker. Slow us down quicker. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, please. Okay, we might be right. Oh, my God. That, well, the 100 meters and the 10 meters per second kind of lined up with one another. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please, no. Please. What? Ah! Well, we're on the planet. <laughs> Oh, should we, should we reload and just add some more thrusters in? Because obviously we're pretty god-awful at this, aren't we? Yeah, look at that. That's our down, and then we start drifting, and it's just... Ooh, it's impossible. Ooh, child, we really suck at this. Ooh, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. If we're reloading, I figured, why not crash it? Anyway, uh, that's it for this episode. Next episode, we'll start out with this ship, uh, fu ow, functional... Um, I'll add some more thrusters off screen. I'm thinking stuck around like this area right here. Uh, I think at least another th four, five, maybe six of them. Yeah, a few more thrusters. And uh, hopefully that'll work out. Anyway, thanks a bunch for watching, guys and gals. Next episode, we'll actually get to work on the base. Yeah.
If you liked the ridiculousness you saw in this episode, consider liking. If you thought it was horrible and I was a cheating bastard for reloading, even though I said I was going to reload, and I just felt like testing it, let's be honest, go ahead and hit the dislike button and tell me why, even though I probably just answered that question myself. Also, consider sharing this video, because of course sharing videos are useful for getting me more views. More views means I survive. Anyway, thanks a bunch for watching, and I shall see you guys and gals next time. Ta-ta.